Now, I know a lot of you here on YouTube would literally love to have your channel explode and get a ton of views and a ton of subscribers. So if you're looking for those insider secrets, this is the video for you. Don't miss out. DarylEves.com Hello, my people of the internet, Daryl Eves here. Now, I know that all of you would really love to grow on YouTube. And really, there are some tips and techniques that you're able to do to really see that massive growth. Now, I have been on YouTube since 2005, and I've seen, uh, I've been a part of 21 channels, starting from nothing and getting over a million subscribers each. And we're about to cross 40 billion video views. Now, here's what I found in developing an audience here on YouTube. It takes a lot of effort and time and energy to create content that would really resonate with your potential audience. And you're gonna see a lot of growth here on YouTube. Now, today I'm really excited because I'm joined by someone that I truly respect as an individual, but also as a YouTube creator. And we're gonna actually talk about some secrets that creators can do here today on YouTube that's going to work, you know, going into the coming months and also the coming years, because these are fundamental things that uh, we're looking to do. And I'm joined by my friend, uh, Sean Cannell. How you doing, Sean? I'm doing awesome, Daryl. Super pumped uh, to be hanging out with you today. Now, I'm really excited to have you uh, a part of this uh, video. We've been meaning to do a video for quite some time, and I know that you have a lot of uh, information and you've really helped not only your channels, girl, but you've worked with a lot of people from there. So why don't you give us some background uh, of your uh yourself, yourself on YouTube, and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you so much. And for me, I got started in video in 2003. And I like to say that your first videos are your worst videos because those early videos, Daryl, I hope nobody ever sees those. But I'm so thankful because I started doing weekly videos for my youth group. And on YouTube, of course, we know one of the important things is consistent content. And so it was almost like before the internet really took up or social media, YouTube didn't start until two years later, I was making weekly videos. So I was 52 videos that first year. I was kind of cutting my teeth learning to produce quicker content. And it was actually really slow. I mean, I'm pulling my hair. I don't know how to edit. I'm forgetting to save. Whoops, the mic wasn't on. You know, you lose your whole shoot, all that kind of stuff. But that was kind of my learning curve. And actually, the first YouTube channel I managed was my churches in 2007. I didn't know how to do thumbnails, titles. I didn't know anything about YouTube, but I was starting in 2007. So by 2000, kind of nine and 10, I now had this video production experience. I had been diving into social media. I'd been studying whatever I could. Eventually, Benji, Travis, and I crossed paths and we launched a channel, Video Influencers, which, which maybe some of the people in this community have heard about. And so fast forward to today, I've gone a lot of different paths, but now my passion is to actually help people build their influence with video. And on my main channel, Think Media, I talk a lot about cameras and lighting, and that's from being in video for over 15 years now. I had this passion and experience with video production, right? Actually creating content and what lenses and how to shoot good looking video. And eventually that kind of shifted into some tips and here we are today. What I love about it is that you actually started somewhere. You started to create content. You started to do it consistently and you're consistently making mistakes. But at the end of the day, you're like learning from those mistakes to try to make it better. Right. And I think that's kind of where all YouTubers come in is, hey, they start posting videos and they learn how to actually improve. Uh, but today I want to kind of jump right in and just focus in on the topic at hand. I know there's a lot of people out there would love to know some secrets when they're starting out to how to actually get more views and also a, a higher engaged audience. And I know that you and Benji put out a book, and I really love this book. I've read it a couple times now. It's called YouTube Secrets. And those that are watching this video right now, at the end of it, I'm going to give away two copies of this book um, that I purchased. They, Sean didn't give it to me. I actually went on Amazon and bought it because it was that good. And I wanted to be able to uh, support him and Benji because they've been great supporters of myself and also Vid Summit. But what advice would you give people that are either plateaued or just starting out uh, when it deals with it? And I think what we should do is like really de uh, dig deep into your book because I've read a lot of YouTube books. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of fluff. There's a lot of misinformation. Uh, but I can guarantee you this. When you sent me an advanced copy of it, I, I read it on a plane and um, heading down to Texas and I had some time uh, that evening. I read it in one day 
And it was by far the best YouTube book I've read up to date. And I've read a lot because there's a lot of information out there. But you and Benji uh, created an approach that was really uh, – these fundamental things are not going to change. It's like things – these are the elements that are never going to change on YouTube. You're not talking about algorithms. You're talking about very – fundamental things that people can do to actually have growth on any platform. Yeah, I, I love that. And I thank you for the kind words. You know, the truth is we also, when we launched out, we wanted to write a book and we actually, ben, Benji held up his camera when we were starting Video Influencers and we declared the book is coming in 2015. No joke. We said that on the <laughs> internet. It's still sitting there and it wasn't until almost four years later that it ended up coming out. But I'm thankful because we interviewed over 100 video influencers. We learned the best practices and we, we wanted it to be right and not rushed. And I think that especially we can dive into some more advanced stuff because I know your community would uh, really be able to uh, appreciate that. But we can cover the seven C's of YouTube success and actually talk about kind of advanced ones for each of those. And so in the book, we talk about the seven C's of YouTube success, courage, clarity, channel content, community cash, and consistency. And I would love if we could just ping pong on each of these. The first one is courage. Now, if we're gonna get into some advanced stuff, you might be like, for some of your audience, they're like, man, I already have like 100 videos, 500 videos. I'm, I'm not afraid to get on camera anymore. But the truth is, if you're going to start YouTube, you do need to punch fear in the face, punch perfectionism in the face, and press record. But uh, if you want to take that even to more advanced level that I think your audience could really appreciate, I think it's important for us to ask, what's the next level of courage we need for our channel? And what I mean is this. At every stage in entrepreneurship as a content creator, we, I think, still get comfortable and complacent. Maybe even things are working. Like maybe even your channel's working, your stuff is working. But oftentimes, the next level of breakthrough is on the other side of the next level of courage. Let me give some specific examples. Uh, a common friend of ours who's also been at Vid Summit, both have, in fact, is uh, Pat Flynn and Gary Vaynerchuk. And Gary Vaynerchuk w did a video about passive income. And he was making some strong statements that I agree with because a lot of the people who preach passive income preach it from kind of a, a fake level. And so, but, but anyways, the truth is Pat Flynn is the founder of Smart Passive Income. What he did was he actually made a reaction video to Gary. And he said it was one of the scariest things he's ever done because he was like, is he going to take it the wrong way? I mean, I agree with him too, but I'm going to, you know, there is real passive income. And then there's like the kind of BS passive income that some people put out there. And point being, he, he punched fear in the face and put out a video that ended up getting a lot of views because people were joining that conversation. It got sucked up into suggested videos and it even outgrew some of his other videos. So for those watching this video, what's the next level of courage of maybe stepping into a polarizing topic, maybe stepping out and sharing something that, man, to take it there, it could be misunderstood, but you know, for your message, your channel, you need to go there. I think there's a lot of growth opportunities on the other side of courage, but we have to summon that, summon that at every level. Yeah. And I would say that courage, you could take it to another level too. It's like, there's a lot of uh, creators that are very satisfied with their content and the courage to actually tweak the content is, is a big step because like, Hey, why would we break that something that's working? And I'm like, is it really working? Truly? Is it really working? You know, because at the end of the day is your average view duration high, you know, are they, are they finishing the end of the video? And I can guarantee you, I get a lot of calls and I know that you do too, of people saying, Hey, my YouTube channel died. And I'm like, well, no, you're putting out crappy content, <laughs> you know, have the courage to go back and say, you know what, these things are working right. These things are working wrong. Let's see if we can try to improve. And that, that analysis is like so critical for sure. The second one is clarity and, uh, you know, clarity is power in the famous book, uh, the seven habits of highly effective people. One of the habits is start with the end in mind. And so, uh, of course, a lot of our friends who are share great YouTube advice talk about the importance of having a target audience, having, um, you know, a value proposition. What is the promise you're making to that audience? When are you going to be delivering on that promise? So you might know that for me, I video influencers, for example, we help people build their influence with video. So people that want to learn how to start a podcast, they don't watch that channel. People that want to learn gardening, they don't watch that channel. People that want cooking, etc. The target audience would be people that want to learn video, entrepreneur minded people. And our promise is weekly interviews and tips and strategy videos uh, to, to help you achieve that goal. And how often? Well, weekly. So that's kind of some basics of having clarity. 
But I think clarity can really go to an advanced level with this question. How well do you really know your audience? How well do you know the people on really that are the other side of watching your videos? I think the better you know and understand your audience, and Daryl, you teach this, the better you kind of know some of those nuances into, you know, there's the demographics, what age are they, where do they live, how old are they, but there's the psychographics, like what are they into, what do they think about at night, what, uh, what are their aspirations, when you not only have clarity about who your target audience is, clarifying your message at a higher level, then you can ultimately reach your audience at a deeper level. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And I like I really love what you have on page 44 here. It's like something that I think about quite a bit uh, when I'm dealing with clients or whatever. Is like really define who's going to be watching your videos. And the more that you can understand that persona, the better it is. And so you actually had 10 questions that you could actually, to actually clarify your target audience. And I, I truly believe that a lot of people just say, hey, these are the type of people that are watching my videos. And for me, I'm like, no, they're not. I mean, like realistically, you're just guessing uh, that they're watching. You're not really getting some better, uh, better idea of who's actually watching and you're not digging deep into it. So you actually go in and you have 10 really, really good questions that you're able to ask to help identify who your target audience is. For me, I know that from the beginning uh, of any YouTube channel, like we're actually launching a brand new YouTube channel in a couple couple days now. Um, I I literally spent six months defining who would actually resonate with this audience, uh, with the video content, who the audience that would resonate with that video content would be. And we actually had focus groups. Like I would show the content to focus groups and see how they would react to it. And what was really interesting is who does that? <laughs> like seriously, at the end of the day, who actually does focus groups for their YouTube channels? And I can tell you the ones that want to get hundreds of millions of video views. Like I want it appeal to the masses and the more that I can understand what triggers them are, you know, I, I can see, you know, as creating the content and editing the content but until I can actually see what actually happens when they're watching the video. And I can predict that when I can predict that. That means I truly understand that avatar. And so I would encourage everybody to go to page 44, go through that as an, as an exercise uh, to really understand who your potential audience is. And the more that you can have it defined, the easier it is to actually grow. I love that. And one practical action item too, is if you have an audience of any size, try and have some conversations with people in your audience, potentially even getting on the phone or getting on Skype or getting on a Zoom call. And that kind of might sound crazy, but you could maybe send it out on, uh, you could make a video about it and have them just schedule something with you or send something out on Twitter. Because when you have those conversations, you know, for us, we have customers that are part of our business. And one of the things we've learned is that we can just theorize all day in a closed room, but just like you're talking about focus groups, you need to talk to people. And when you start bouncing ideas off of those that are watching, what did you like? What did you not like? What do you want to see? It doesn't mean you're going to do everything, but you're going to learn so much from, like you said, better understanding your audience and having a higher level of clarity because clarity is power. Well, number three is channel, right? And this is in order because you got to punch fear in the face and start. You got to have clarity about where you ultimately want to go on YouTube. And then if you're going to upload a video, you ultimately need to start a channel and go through the basics of that. I think two practical things that could be really helpful. Number one, do you need to do a spring, winter, or summer cleaning on your channel? I mean, when was the last time you updated maybe your cover art, you made sure all your social media links are working? I mean, Daryl, a lot of times I'll do channel reviews and I'll just start clicking around. I'll be like, well, if one thing to fix would be the fact these links are broken, you know, like uh, updating your about page. And then one of the biggest things I think as we go into kind of some more advanced things with channel is really thinking about, if you will, the user experience on your homepage. And our homepage, right, is organized by, what, do you have a channel trailer? What's your featured content? And how are you organizing your content in playlists? And how do those playlists 
maybe speak to people that are there for the first time. So our mutual friend, Tim Schmoyer, he talks about like a watch this first playlist. It could be that, like, are you new here? There could be a watch this first, or it could be simply organizing your shows or the categories of your content. But I think really having a channel strategy, which could be woven into a playlist strategy as well. No, I think playlist is a super powerful way to actually develop your channel. And I think a lot of people don't have a strategy to number one, uh, do some spring cleaning on their, on their content. And I, I actually delete videos and I'm wondering, is that part of your, your cleaning process? Do you actually delete any videos? I like that you brought that up because I was recently thinking about that. Um, I haven't, and I've heard different things. You probably, you're the master. You could tell me if you make a video unlisted or private, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily want to delete the views or I, I, you know, things like that. So what is your advice? Well, as soon as you make it private, the the views are actually deleted off of your counter. So, like I, I personally, if if I put it private, I'm going to just delete it off. Um, I know that there are some people that privatize their their videos, and then what they do is take time to fix their metadata and so on and so forth, and then uh, remake them uh, public. And it does create uh, some some movement. Um, but for me, if it's like an older video that's not getting me any views, um, at the end of the day, it, it's what's happening in the, the last 90 days um, from my perspective and not something that's maybe getting you one or two video views in a 90 day period. Next up is once you've got, of course, your channel set up is content. And we could spend a lot of time here. This is probably, you know, the most important C arguably because content is king. Um, and uh, content is what wins on YouTube. You're never going to have success on YouTube if you have poor content that people don't wanna watch. We talk about kind of some basic areas, but I think they are important for us. It comes down to the content has to be valuable. It doesn't have to be valuable to everybody. In fact, it only has to be valuable to a very specific group of people, and it has to have some sort of delivered value in a couple of different areas. It could be information. And I think about information like news, Phil DeFranco, you know, every, every night, most days of the week, I get filled in with what's happening in, you know, culture and in the news. He's conveying information with a little bit of his two cents around it. Uh, there's also education similar to what you and I do, right? How to, it could be how to grow your YouTube channel or how to have uh, greener tomatoes or greener tomatoes, probably red tomatoes, right? <laughs> and it reminds me of a story in YouTube Secrets by um, John Kohler. We interviewed him on Video Influencers. He has a channel called Growing Your Greens. And when I think about content, you know, a lot of times people think about content value. They think about the camera quality, the lighting. They think about all those things. And that stuff can matter. And depending on your niche, I think it is important. But it's always the content value, not the camera or the production value. And be, John Kohler is a great illustration of that because he uses a $150 refurbished Canon camcorder. He has a juicing business where he sells juicers online. And so one of his employees follows him around his garden with that camera, no microphone, just the onboard mic. And a lot of times his videos are anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to an over an hour of like showing you what's happened with the, you know, cucumbers and how his four different compost things. So the point is, I don't watch this content. Benji actually does because Benji's a gardener, so he loves it. I don't find the content valuable because I'm not interested, but over 550,000 subscribers now, millions of video views. Why? Because he's serving a particular group of people with education. You know, a couple other areas is inspiration or motivation. Sometimes there's channels we watch, like our friend Evan Carmichael, who, who just kind of gives a lot of inspiration and motivation for entrepreneurs. I think there's another category too, and that's community. I think that YouTube prevent, uh, provides the opportunity to have live streams, two-way conversations, to actually build community. And then you can stack these. There's of course the edutainment movement where you're learning something while it's also being entertaining. The point is this, if you wanna win on YouTube, the content has to be valuable to somebody. And you want to, before you press record, have defined that value. It all stacks on clarity, really knowing who you're serving. And, and I guess there's some level of, if you will, luck to YouTube, but Daryl, with your track record of success and the channels you've built, you realize that it's not guaranteed success, but you realize there is a formula, right? It's like, well, if you got a clear audience that has a desire 
and you serve that desire by figuring out who they are. Obviously, it might take time and hustle and persistence and a lot of those things and tweaking and testing. But when you deliver value, people respond. But here's the thing, though, and and I too believe that it, that, that there is some luck, but it's luck of when you're going to get picked up. Like if you have really good content, you're going to succeed. Now. I, I want to make this clarification. A lot of creators think their content's amazing and it's really bad, <laughs> like very, very bad content. And it's not to, to, to discourage anyone, but what I view as content, and I'll go ahead and put it in a card right here, but basically content is your title, your thumbnail, your hook, then your video content uh, in your video, and then your description. That's what content is. And I'm here to tell you at the end of the day, that I have literally seen people that says, no, this is amazing content. But yet when we go into the analytics, like there's the hockey stick effect, which is, you know, it starts at hundred percent, but within th 30 seconds, it's down to like 20% audience retention or 30% or 40 or even 50% audience retention. That means within 30 seconds, 50% of the people actually left. Now, I was just doing a channel review today of someone I'm working with and we were going in depth on an audit. Um, and just some small tips of improving their content. They went from 40% average view duration to 71% average, average view duration. And it was just like realizing where they were losing the audience and, and really in the edit or in the content to, to, to try to improve that. So at the end of the day, I truly believe that, that the biggest uh, way to grow on YouTube is to improve your content. And that content isn't just your video, it's your title, your thumbnail, your hook, and that description as well. And so I think a lot of creators, when they understand that and they start to understand who their audience is and they're able to cater to that, that's when they're able to see that success. I love that. I also heard a, f a friend of mine, Shalene Johnson, she said this, when you're creating content, try to be brief, be bright, be fun, and be done. <laughs> and I thought that's kind of, it's a great way to say it. And, and some people ask, how long should your YouTube videos be? Well, well, you probably agree. I think your videos should be as long as they need to be, but actually as short as possible. So if they need to be like, we're going deep into some, you know, this is a longer video. We're talking deeper in a concept. We're going through some things. But if the video, if we just, you know, if we made this video, which is however long, eight hours long, that would be too long. You know, we would need to cut it down. And that's probably one of the biggest practical tips that I see a lot uh, that many people watch you could probably do. How could you make your content just getting to the point quicker? You know, it's, it's, it's quick. Uh, it, it could still be long because it's delivering value, but you just, you're not, there's no fluff in there. There's not wasted time in there. I, like you said, just maximizing those, uh, your content and small tweaks leads to giant peaks when it comes to uh, content for sure. All right, next up, we're going to talk about community, which is absolutely huge, right? So now you're, you've stepped out there, you've got your channel, you're pumping out videos. Well, we know this that YouTube is not like traditional media, which was kind of like a one-way street. We're pushing content to you and that's it. And then maybe someday you could watch me on the Grammys on the red carpet. No, YouTube is a two-way conversation. On this very video, people are able to leave comments. You, of course, engage with your community. You bring your community offline to an event called Vid Summit. People watch on the virtual spot uh, pass. People are able to connect on live streams. YouTube is about community. And for us, not only is it acknowledging that fact and doing things, well, there's really three areas. We'd say that when it comes to community, the first thing you want to do is really reply. And that is, people say that all the time. Try, as if you're just starting, reply to every comment possible. I think you could take that to another level and not just reply, but try to, try to start a conversation as opposed to just saying thanks to a comment. Maybe ask a question and, and get, try to get to know people. What you don't want to just have is not just a comment. You want to create a connection. And those channels that actually fuse connections with their community is really huge. I think the second thing is to listen. I think one of the biggest opportunities we have, even talking about improving your content, is by not just making connections with your community, but listening to get future video ideas, to get future... Um, uh, you know, content ideas to talk about how you can improve your content and and see what people that are watching really want. And the third area is surprise and wow. I think that one of the things you could try to do is really wow people in your community um, by just going the extra mile. 
you know, for me, and again, mentioning Gary uh, Vaynerchuk, who spoke at, you know, at VidSum in the last couple of years, um, years ago, I've been following him ever since he wrote his book, Crush It! in 2009. And I remember at the time, he's, his brand was building and he had a million Twitter followers. And there was this thing about the fact that he was on Twitter and he would actually reply to people. And sure enough, I remember I tweeted him and I got this reply back from Gary V, who I'm now looking up to. I just read his book. And I'll tell you what, Daryl. It was so profound. I think his reply was like two words, no punctuation. You know, he didn't like share multiple sentences with me or anything, but the fact he replied with the fact that he can't really scale even connecting at that time with everybody, man, it created such a deep connection. I mean, I'm telling you about it. Your audience, like we're talking and about how many it years ago years was that? later. <laughs> yeah, there's literally eight years ago. Yeah. And so I guess we're kind of spreading his brand. But what happened? He created a deeper connection with this community. And I like to call that surprise and wow. Sometimes what we'll try to do, and this has been greatly influenced by Gary and many others who do it, is sometimes it's all, it's kind of scary, but I guess I'm looking for the connection is I'll click through on someone's YouTube channel that comments on one of my videos, go to their social media feed, see if they have a Twitter or an Instagram, go over to like their Twitter or their Instagram and just say, Hey, thank you so much for being a part of the think media community, taking it off platform. That's yep. insane. That takes, you know what I mean? Like it, I've, the responses I've gotten from people, or I'll send a Twitter video to somebody it might take me 20 seconds. And these are just little things. I'm, I'm sure there's a million ideas if you're a community brainstormed with how can you show your community that you care at a higher level. I heard one leader say it this way because some of your audience is probably pretty large. They're like, well, I can't do that for everybody. I heard one person say, well, do for one what you wish you could do for all. Yeah. Gary doesn't probably reply to every single tweet, not even close. But the fact that word of mouth spreads when you just put out that effort to really care. And by the way, this isn't a tactic. I think it's a it's a heart. It, 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 there's tactical things you could do, it, but they want to be motivated of out of the community. fact you care. Like it's, a, it's literally a way to grow. Um, and, and one thing that you have like on page uh, it's like 76, it's like develop true fans. Like you have to develop the true fans. I, I like that for a couple reasons. And that's one way. I mean, you're a true fan. You know, when you feel like you're being taken care of, uh, but really to grow on YouTube, you have to grow your core audience. And that's that core audience is going to be on your live streams. They're going to be at your meetups. They're going to be really engaging. They're commenting, they're sharing. Those are your true fans. And so you need to kind of light that fire or ignite that fire to have those true friends grow. Now, I know there's a lot of channels here on YouTube that don't have a talking head. There's no connection. You don't have a you know, someone that's the leader of, of your channel. And so you might not necessarily need to do this, but I would say the bulk of you, the bulk that are watching this, um, they're missing an opportunity by growing that core audience. And I, I noticed that you guys uh, specifically have grown your core audience. And as you grow your core audience, you're getting more people that tune in daily or weekly to your content and they don't miss anything. It's like, they're a part of it. They're coming to your events in Vegas. They're, they're being a part of that community and they're taking it to a level where they even start moderating and commenting on other true fans. And they have that, that true engagement that's theirs, which is, which is amazing. Community is so important and YouTube is super powerful for community, but let's talk about the sixth C and that is cash. That is cash. Now, of course, uh, people in your community, I'm sure are like, yeah, how do I make money on YouTube or how do I potentially make more money? And I know that's probably a common ambition, but on the flip side, I do want to just address one thing when it comes to cash that sometimes we all, we all, we all are, gr are raised with certain mindsets around money and mindsets around uh, income. And while what I'm about to say might seem obvious, I actually think that everybody watching should have higher ambitions for how much money they want to make off of what they do. I think that people were like, well, yeah, I, I want to make a lot of money. But I, I, the reason I say that is because you need cash, you need money for the mission. And I think that if you, everybody here on YouTube that's watching this, they want to impact people. They probably want to you know, raise awareness for a cause or they want to gather even a community around a common game that everybody loves or they want to inspire people or they want to make people laugh. And, and we might realize this is obvious, but cash goes beyond just paying your bills. It goes into the fact that when you've got more resources, you can scale faster, whether that means gear or equipment or team, or um, whether that means even moving into things like paid ads or paid traffic. Money helps you fund 
the mission and it helps you go further faster. And so in the book, we talk about 10 different ways to make money on YouTube ways that you've definitely covered on this channel. And so we could talk about some of those nuanced ways. I think my favorite way for making money on YouTube is actually affiliate marketing. And the reason right. why is, you know, I think YouTube ads are great and it's a great way for uh, many channels after they get at scale and they get a lot of views with AdSense to make money. But I know there's also some discouragement around uh, with the demonetization that happened and the changing policy, needing 4,000 hours of watch time and 1,000 subscribers. And what was cool is for me, YouTube ads was never something I even focused on, even though those terms around the partner program didn't exist. The fact is, though, back early on, I mean, I remember getting on YouTube before they didn't even let everybody into the partner program where you applied and you waited, not because of watch time, because it was very small very and very select, exclusive yeah. group. Yeah, exactly. And so it's always been different throughout the years. But one fact remains, whether it's affiliate marketing or, or anything, YouTube is ultimately just a distribution platform. It is a, it's kind of a, a middle channel between you and the end user, the end viewer, that end person in your community. And so just like someone could watch content over Instagram or watch content over Facebook, they can watch content over YouTube and you can accomplish any entrepreneurial endeavor with that. I think sometimes we become so myopic around monetizing through AdSense and we forget that really if you have an audience, you could sell anything at all, your yeah. own services, yourself as a freelancer, of course, merch, but you could also do different affiliate things, whether for Amazon or even for events and software you partner with. I mean, there's so many different things. And so, um, uh, I mean, you could, you could have an Airbnb <laughs> that you yourself want to get the word out around and you can make YouTube videos about it and try to rank that video in a local city. Again, you can promote your real estate business. So, so really it's understanding that there's so many different ways, right, to make cash. But what I love about affiliate marketing was I remember back when I was starting, it's probably not the best path for every channel, but if you have something that has a lot of products in it, lifestyle and beauty, fashion, right? Maybe pets. I think looking at a site like Famebit and even how they categorize content, of course, with gaming, whether that's subscriptions and software or whether that's gaming headsets and gaming PCs and computers, there's so many different things you can promote as an affiliate. And that was ultimately the way I was able to go full-time on YouTube was just not even counting the ad sets, was just the Amazon Associates program and YouTube um, as a tech YouTuber, and I was eventually able to go full time, not even thinking about AdSense. Now, what I what I really love is when I when I work with someone, whether a client or you know someone that I'm giving tips to, I'm like, okay, it's it's about the money, and they're like, no, it's not about the money, it's about the creation. You know, I really like it; it's a hobby, whatever, blah blah blah. And I'm like, no, at the end of the day, it's about money. And if you can't have the money, then you can't perform at the level that you need to perform. You know, you know, having better equipment. You know, having a team that, that, that's able to help you do that. There's all these things take money to do it. So I'm like, okay, tell me the finish line. What, you know, you would absolutely say, oh, I'd be so amazed if I could get this per month. And I'm always surprised that people actually, it's not that, that, that much money. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, they say, oh, if I can make X amount of dollars, that would be great. I can quit my job, do this full time. You know, it just needs to be consistent. And, you know, we show them a path, we show them a way we say, okay, if you tweak this, or if you look at these other avenues, if you do some list building or some affiliate marketing, whatever it may be, you can get to that level. My favorite example is when I was coaching this lady that was uh, uh, over 70 years old, she only had about 10,000 subscribers and she was making a hundred thousand dollars a month after we were able to show her how to take her audience, the people that were watching her content and send it into a funnel where she was able to provide products that was very exclusive for the content that she was making. And what I love about it was her life up, literally went upside down because she was on social security, all this other stuff. And now, you know, she has to pay like 40% tax because she's making so much money per month. And, you know, it's great because, you know, she was able to do things uh, that she wasn't able to do before, which was travel, get out and see your grandkids, uh, but also start hiring people to do a lot of this stuff. And so she was only spending anywhere between 10 to, to 20 hours a, a given month to create the content. And she actually created a business and a system to actually get the money that was actually there, which is, which is fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant. And it's, it, it's super inspiring. And, and I totally agree. I think, um, that is one thing I'm glad you brought up. You do want to define clarity. If you want to jump off to go full time, what does that even mean for you? 
And a lot of times when I ask people that question, sometimes they're not sure. They're like, well, I don't even know. And I was like, well, it's probably the first number you want to figure out because when you can define that number, you can work backwards. And I would also encourage people, don't despise small beginnings. I remember my first affiliate payment from Amazon was $1.59. And and I didn't even get the money because you need to like hit a threshold. But I just (laughs) thought I was sitting there in my account. We had some money. Yeah, yeah and, I remember when I got my first and, and I think <laughs> Exactly, right? And don't despise small beginnings because here's the cool thing. If you've made $4 on AdSense, if you've made $40 on affiliate marketing, if you've sold one thing, it's proof of concept. Then once you've done it once, then you just go, okay, well, how do I scale this? How do I make this bigger? So when I thought a dollar, $1.59, I was like, this is amazing because what if I can make this $5 and then 50 and then 500? And sure enough, that was the journey. And I've learned that what gets measured gets improved. You would agree with that, of course, measure Absolutely. your analytics, measure your views, but you want to keep your eyes on that dashboard of income because you go, okay, look, I took these actions. Well, these videos really work, not only to the views, but this video really converted in sales or whatever it is. And what gets measured gets improved. So the more you pay attention to those dashboards, the better your results can be. After you give this nope. last one, there's a couple of tips and techniques. So you don't want to just jump off now. You actually want to take the last moment. And then we're actually going to give away two books of Sean's book and, and uh, Benji's book of YouTube secrets. And we'll talk about that right after this last tip. I love it. I love it. So the last tip here is consistency. And it's so important to put in this, put this in here, even though we hear it kind of a lot, like, oh, you got to be consistent on YouTube. But my question is, even though that might be common sense, it's not always common practice. And if you've been on YouTube for a while, you've realized how hard it is to be consistent. And I'm not even talking about for a year. I'm talking about how do you be consistent for multiple years? How do you be consistent over the long haul? The truth is when I started Think Media, it started in 2010. It took off in 2015. Now I had a job, I had other things going on, but throughout even those years, I was uploading when I could, I was posting when I could, and it laid a foundation for me one day when, if you will, I left my day job to do my dream job. It's because I was being consistent here and there while it was my side hustle. But then even once it becomes your main thing, how do you stay consistent? And I think the big punchline here is you need to create smart systems that allow you to be consistent. For example, batch production, right? Shooting multiple videos at once. Now, I'm aware that if you're doing gameplay, you might need to do that in real time. Or if you're uh, daily vlogging, that is a different kind of path. But for most of us, if we could find a way to create systems to stack our efforts, don't just shoot one video and set up your lighting and put on your camera and take a shower and plan it out. When you could set everything up, do all of those processes stacked and shoot four videos in one sitting. Can, one example I, is Crystal Sparks. On who, this, one. this was probably the please? most important uh, secret that that YouTubers need to understand, which is consistency of getting your content out. I know that daily vloggers get thrown into a category like, oh, well, you have to do it daily. Um, I have people reaching out to me and they're like doing a consult and they're saying, hey, uh, we're daily vloggers and we're burned out. There's just no way. And I'm like, well, take time off. We can't take time off. The YouTube algorithm will penalize us. I'm like, number one, no, it won't. Uh, but number two, you don't have to miss a, an upload schedule. And they're like, why? And he says, people don't necessarily want to see you when you wake up and then your whole day and then when you go to sleep. What they want to see is experiences. And if you can kind of get those experiences in a vlog where you start it, you begin, you have the story arc, you end it, you know, and you have that completion, you can actually do that. And so I had a, a client that says, oh man, I just don't know if we can do it. We put together a strategy for them what they're able to change their content in a, in a unique way where the uh, audience didn't feel disconnected. It was, it, it had some continuity between the older content that they had. The only difference was, is they weren't doing five different activities in a day. They were just doing you know, the lead up to one. Now, the only difference was, is they had to change some clothes. That was a very inconvenient thing thing for them to do. But in two weeks of doing the strategy of uh, creating uh, production schedules of doing specific uh, activities, they were able to get a whole week ahead. And that whole week within about a month turned into two weeks ahead. So they actually had two weeks of content. They knew it was going uh, out for the next 14 days. They could actually start um, working on their thumbnails better. They could working on their title structure better. And and they really did it. Do you know what happened to their YouTube channel? Just not only because they had, they had some time to 
decompress and actually go on a vacation. It was like the first vacation they did in five years. What what do you think happened to their channel itself? Do you think it died? Even though they were uploading consistently and they changed their strategy, they got 800% more views. <laughs> 800%. Why? Because they were spending a little bit more time on focusing on the content to make the content better instead of just saying, all right, guys, I'm just vlogging today, you know, and there's no energy, no emotion. They were losing. They had a lot of attrition, but it was more about having fun, doing videos. It was like coming back to them of why they actually started on YouTube, why they were creating videos, because it was fun again, because they were like saying, look, we can actually capture this in a vlog and we can do four vlogs today. And that's four days that we can take off. And so they really, really pumped about that. That's absolutely br uh, brilliant, Daryl. And I'm so glad you, s you shared that because that's a smart system. And I think that a lot of us as content creators, when we first start out, we're kind of figuring this thing out as we go, but you're right. There's there burnout and there, there's all those articles that came out recently of a lot of YouTubers burning out. I think some people from afar say, you know, oh, wow, 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 you're living your dream life. But what they don't realize is until you've done this, you don't really actually understand the mental exertion, the emotional exertion, the creativity exertion, the constant demand. You know, uh, Benji, Travis and Judy, uh, his wife, uh, have vlogged now and they were daily vlogging. I think they daily vlogged for over five years. And, 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 and they live a great life, you know, so they get to go to like a Disneyland or they get to go on vacation. But on the flip side, it is a great life, but most people go on vacation, they go on vacation. You're still editing a couple <laughs> hours every single day, it, every day, no matter what. your team, please build a team. Um, unless I you're give, building your team. Yeah. I want to give one shout out because my, my mind switched when I got a, a client and, um, you know, I thought, oh, you could do, you know, a couple videos in a day. I went up and I was doing, I'm still doing the marketing for them, but for Studio C and they actually would record all their sketches. And I went up to the first taping and I witnessed something that I've never, ever, ever been, uh, seen before. And I'm like, my mind just expanded. And it was this, I watched them actually film and, and get everything right for 16 sketches. That was 16 videos. And they did it in two hours. Two hours. Wow. And my mind just exploded. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, if they're able to do that with their manpower, what could you do if you actually plan this out and you actually had some help getting some of this stuff done, what you're able to do? And I, I found clients that I would work with in our own channels itself. You could actually get five to six different videos in a given day if you plan it out right. And, and if you do it in a way. Now, one of the things that I noticed is some bigger YouTubers that we're working with, um, we, we actually had like a get together, it was like a massive collab. And we actually counted that 21 videos were made in, in about 10 hours, 21 videos. And it was like, hey, a video here, a collab video there, and shout out here. And it was just all coming together. And it was just done in a, a few hours, but it was like consistent planning and knowing, hey, can you come over and be in my video? Well, yeah, I'll be, do that. And it was like a really, really massive thing. And so I think at the end of the day, when you are doing this, when you're looking to uh, create your content and your strategy, like don't get burned out. Like look, look at a way that you're able to capitalize on the time that you have and, and try to improve it by thinking ahead. And one of the things that I, I know that everyone can do, this is a YouTube secret at the end of the day, probably the biggest secret that I could, I could give out there that's alluded to this in the, in the book too, but like, I truly believe it. It's like the more that you prepare for your video and, and you lead up that you, you're like, what, what would make a good thumbnail? What would make a good title? You know, I was actually uh, working with uh, my friend, Mr. Beast, who's just crushing it right now on YouTube. And we literally spent a whole day just going over video ideas, thumbnail ideas, and titles. Not even the, the video content is just like, what can we get for people to click? And then it was the next step is like, what, what can we do to keep them on the video? And, and I think the reality is at the end of the day, we don't spend enough time preparing for our videos to actually get people to watch our videos. And so, you know, knowing what, what thumbnail is going to convert higher, knowing what, what, uh, what title will support that thumbnail, what hook will be interesting. I think we could all spend a little bit more time on that to improve that type of content. That's brilliant. And we say, 
and you just went beyond that, but we a lot of times say that you want to research before you press record. And that would speak to researching video ideas, title ideas, maybe even seeing search volumes of what topics are popular. But that also, it speaks to that fact of, of preparation, right? I mean, prior planning prevents poor performance. And when you have started with the end of mind, you haven't even pressed record yet. You're already, you're getting that vision for like, let's reverse engineer. What does the audience want? Well, this is the kind of thumbnail they'd click on. This is the kind of title they'd click on. So what should the hook be for that? And then you, you're right. Like you're starting with the end in mind. You're like basically working backwards, yeah. which more and more that, that provides us the opportunity rather than invest all this energy, just guessing. I wonder if people want to see this and then shooting some videos and putting it together and even structuring it. Oh, I forgot to do this. And you know, you're reacting. It kind of is the difference between a production schedule and, and just shooting from the hip. You know, when you have, you know, have a film background like me, you would just go out, you might shoot a bunch of stuff and then you'd come all the way back. You'd be like, oh, we forgot to shoot the B-roll. We didn't shoot yeah. any thumbnails versus <laughs> yeah. having a plan up front and actually nailing everything and thinking about micro content. And I, I think I heard you talk about one time, don't even just shoot one thumbnail, shoot potentially multiple thumbnails so that later you have some adaptability. All of that doesn't have to stress you out if you've got a good system in place. And that's what I think helps us have consistency. And consistency is what lit wins over the long haul. You probably have seen this more than anyone, Daryl, too, is that it's one thing to even succeed on YouTube for a while. It's a whole nother thing to actually succeed on YouTube over multiple years and to yeah. talk even eras, some eras yeah. of YouTube come and go. And having a system that can help you sustain not just your content output, but even reinvention and and evolving your channel. It's it's a daunting task for sure, but with wisdom and with a smart structure around your content and your team and everything else, it's definitely possible. And uh, I think that these tips can help. Now we're gonna do two things. Number one, we're gonna give away two copies of this book. Now, the way we're gonna do this is I want everyone watching this video, this has been a longer video, and so I applaud you for getting to this part of the video, and this is where you're gonna benefit. I want you all to put your best YouTube secret and put it in as a comment, and the most, the most engagement that a comment has, I will actually reach out to them and send them this book. And two, if, if there's a comment that you really resonate or someone that's going, uh, above and beyond uh, to build up this community here. Uh, shout them out and why they're doing that. I'm gonna give one for the best comment, for the best secret that they actually have, YouTube secret. The next one is for someone that's actually building this community. And that's basically individuals that are watching this right now that are engaged with other channels that are out there. So those are the two ways to win the book. Um, Sean, like, I. I know they can buy this on Amazon. That's where I bought my copy. And there's a link in the description below. But uh, what what's one last bit of advice, one last secret that you could give someone besides getting your book, uh, which I would encourage everyone to do, what would that be? Yeah, I think that probably my, my favorite kind of thought right now, and I've been saying it for a while, but I think it matters more even as we go into 2019 and 2020, and that is a quote from Sally Hogshead, uh, author of Fascinate. She said this, different is better than better. And I think if you want to stand on YouTube and grow, don't try to be the next, you know, Liza Koshy. Don't try to be Casey Neistat. Don't try to be Peter McKinnon. We can learn from all these people. Don't try to be the next Daryl Eves or Tim Schmoyer. Like learn the best practices, of course. Like learn even styles and shots. But you want to be you. You want to be you times two, and you want to figure out how to be different. There's another great book called The Blue Ocean Strategy. You want to sail to the blue ocean. You want to find a different angle. And just to summarize this, I think, is the fact that you might even feel like your niche is crowded, your topic is crowded, and it probably is. And it reminds me, I grew up in Seattle. I live in Vegas now, but I grew up in Seattle and it's the home of Starbucks coffee. And I remember going to the first ever Starbucks with my dad before even the, the one that's like in Pike Place Market that people think is the first one. It wasn't even the first one. It was a couple blocks over. And my dad used to take me there. And of course, Starbucks started. Now it's all over the world. It's kind of the McDonald's of coffee. They're the same everywhere. Some people love them. Some people hate, hate them. They're kind of right in the middle. And they sell coffee though, right? On one side, compared to Starbucks, you also have like Dunkin' Donuts. It's gonna be faster, it's gonna be cheaper, 
great coffee. People love Dunkin' Donuts. And then on the other side, you've got like your local hipster coffee shop. And everybody watching <laughs> probably knows this place in your local town. The guy's got like a waxed mustache, tattoos, <laughs> gauged ears, right? Pour over coffee. He's talking about how single origin it is and like where all the beans came from. The point is this. Hipster coffee shop, Starbucks coffee, Dunkin' Donuts, they actually all sell the same thing. They all sell coffee, but they're all different. They serve a different target market. They have a different positioning on what it is they do. They have a different way of doing what they do. There's how they do it, there's uh, what they do, and there's why they do it, and they're different. So for everybody that wants to grow on YouTube, you, again, you, you might have a thousand other channels that are kind of doing, if you will, the same thing as you. That doesn't mean you can't be different. It could be just a small tweak on that. How can you be the Starbucks or the Dunkin' Dunkin' Donuts or like the more boutique hipster shop? Figure out your brand, your angle, your unique channel. Stop trying to be like somebody else ultimately and find that unique genius that is you. I think that's where breakthrough on YouTube really happens, especially in today's uh, era with YouTube. Thank you so much for that tip. And I'm gonna give the final thoughts, but I wanna thank Sean for coming on. And realistically, all you that are actually watching this content uh, right now, this video, there's a lot that you can actually learn um, from just you know rewatching this video and really applying what you're learning. But at the end of the day, I agree with Sean, it's literally trying to be who you are and developing your voice. And also there's there's things that, that really successful YouTubers do and you can learn from those patterns. Like, hey, Casey Knight does this and someone does this and how they engage the audience. You can look at those things and adopt it into you, but not try to mimic them. Don't become the next Casey Neistat, but actually look at some fundamental uh, uh, principles that all of them are doing or using to engage with the audience. So uh, one last thing, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. Make sure you put the comment in for your YouTube secret and also give a shout out to someone that's actually benefiting this community because they're gonna get this book. Thanks again, Sean, for coming on. And guys, go out and be successful here on YouTube so we can change the world.